We'll just move on. Item number, we're back in to session. Item number 114, to consider referring to the Ordinance Committee responsibility for reviewing the dedication procedures within the subdivision regulations and take any necessary action. Michael? Jane. Jane, sorry. Yeah. Uh, because uh, there's some ambiguity in this part of uh, the new subdivision ordinance which we passed, in reference to land being dedicated to the town by uh, developers. Uh, I'd like to uh, have the new ordinance committee take a fresh look at this and to, uh, to look at the possibility of a discrepancy and to try to clear up these language and also to review uh, to whom the land should be dedicated. Uh, so I'd like to have both of those issues reviewed and sent to the ordinance. Second Oh, that's a motion. That was a, a motion? I guess it was. Uh, Councillor Lester, Jordan? Well, I, I was just going to move it, but she just moved it. Okay. And it's been seconded. Councillor Latore. Yes, thank you, Madam Chairman. I'm, I'm just wondering, Councillor Amaro, what you mean by when you say ambiguity. What What is ambiguous in your mind? There are two different references uh, in the ordinance to the dedication of land uh, by by a developer in a subdivision. And uh, it's not exactly clear uh, how much total land needs to be dedicated. Hmm. And then is the second part of your concern as to whether or not the uh, land trust should be an appropriate right. alternative rather than the municipality? Right. And if it is an appropriate alternative, if maybe we could not uh, clarify that language to make sure that uh, uh, if the land trust did become de defunct, that uh, the land would uh, be returned to the town. Or that there be some kind, that there could be some language added if we wanted to, if we wanted to continue uh, dedicating to the land trust to make sure that the land uh, would not be sold uh, and to make sure that it wouldn't be returned to the town in case of the land trust going defunct. I, I'm just thinking only because we poured over it for so many hours in the ordinance committee and then here at the council level, I'm surprised that, that an ambiguity of that magnitude came up and I don't have it in front of me so I don't really know what you're referring to, but I would vote in favor of that just based on if we need another discussion about the land trust, so. Any more discussion? Well, I oh. think if I Councilor yes. Jordan. I, I would... Um, kind of agree with Council Latore that we went over it a good number of times and what have you, but I just want you to understand that when that was voted, it wasn't a seven to nothing vote for that. It was a four to three type vote. So there's members of this council at that time was in question of how that would work and what would happen. Are you ready for the vote? All those in favor of the motion. Opposed, it's unanimous. Yeah. Item number 115, to consider authorizing the town council chairman to send a letter to the town of Scarborough in order to resolve the boundary between Cape Elizabeth and Scarborough and take any necessary action. So moved. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Opposed, unanimous. Item number 116, to consider approving abatements of old personal property taxes for watercraft and take any necessary action. Michael? Uh, these taxes are, are part of an aggressive program that's been underway for four or five years now to collect all the, the boat taxes under the old personal property tax. There's now an excise tax on boats. Uh, it came down to, uh, in the end, these three final uh, boats, uh, the 
First, to uh, you're unable to prove definitively that the taxes were ever owed in Cape Elizabeth. Uh, the third instance is, is very similar. And uh, in fact, we did have a settlement recently, uh, three or four months ago, uh, on it. Uh, and some taxes were paid uh, because there was a there was a clear dispute of residency. And uh, I should have brought the third one to the council at that time and uh, uh, forgot to do so. And uh, this is to clear up uh, that one at this point. But uh, we have been otherwise collecting all those taxes. Uh, Councillor Jordan. All three of these, were they all documented votes? Yes. If I understand that term you mean correctly. Registered? Documented in the Coast Maryland, Maryland. Uh, uh, yes. Maryland somewhere. Yeah, there was a, particularly in the third one, there was a time when the gentleman had moved to Yarmouth in between, and uh, his uh, belief is that he was living in Yarmouth at the time that. Uh, the taxes uh, were assessed, and uh, we had no information uh, to the contrary. But I think at the time, uh, prior to prior to this new way of taxing boats, uh, that would have been double taxation, because you pay taxation <coughs> in documentation, and so the town, I don't believe, any right to try to collect We tried. Probably shouldn't have. <coughs> Are you ready for the vote? Need a motion. I think I need a uh, Councilor Carson. I move that we approve the abatement of the following personal property taxes. <coughs> B&B trawlers for 1982, 83, and 84, $3,235. <coughs> Nancy Bailey for 1982, 83, and 84 for $64.70. Edward O'Neill for 1981, $336.32. Second. All those in favor? It's unanimous. Item number 117, to consider authorizing the expenditure of up to $2,000 from the Town Council contingency account to remove ledge at the entrance of the refuse disposal area and take any necessary action. On Michael. two separate occasions, Mr. Edmund Capano uh, came to the town council meeting and uh, rec suggested that the town council uh, arrange to have removed ledge that as you're coming out of the refuse disposal area, it's on the right and blocks the visibility. Uh, uh, subsequent uh, to his second visit, we retained a, an estimate uh, from a local contractor uh, that does blasting, uh, and he provided us an estimate as, as well as a, uh, a ceiling price of uh, $2,000 to uh, remove that ledge. And if the council would like to do it, uh, that is the cost. Has there been any other comment from the traffic or the public works people? I mean, is there some agreement besides our illustrious council watcher, Mr. Capano? Is there, I mean, is ever other people looked at it? Yeah, we've looked at it. It's a tough spot. It's marginal as to site distance uh, criteria. As you're going out from the dump, it's on the right. It's on, yes. Councilor Jordan. Is this the only bidder and low bidder? Or? Yes. They went out for bid? They went out for proposals. He has offered to do it as well on a time and materials basis. And uh, that is that is still under review. But uh, regardless, uh, it would be at a cost not to exceed 2000 What do you mean by a time and materials? <clears throat> That he would rent to us by the hour the use of the, the drill machine, uh, any equipment that's necessary, the blasting caps, uh, would charge us for all those materials. And then public works would do the work? Well, Is that's, that what you're saying? Yes, public works would work with them, which we wouldn't anyway to see how much we can scrape away and uh, try to reduce the overall quantity. The alternative to that is a certain price per yard. And this, this amount, the 2,000, is based on uh, some measurements that take off of the amount of ledge there, uh, so many cubic yards uh, to the customary uh, charge. Oh, Councillor Jordan. He had his hand up for this. Uh, Councillor I was going Tory. to move it unless you have further I, comment. I have a comment. Go right ahead. Thank you. 
No, I would just like to say <coughs> that, uh, in my opinion, it is a uh, problem area. You have to really get your nose out pretty close to the street in order to see down to see if anyone is coming up and you have to be very careful and I think it would be 2,000 bucks well spent and before somebody got hurt at that intersection because when Frank Latour is campaigning the traffic is heavy there and <laughs> so I will order to trying to, heavy trying to flee trying to get out. <laughs> They whip right around that right and right by me. To authorize the removal of the ledge near the entrance of the refuse disposal area for the cost not to exceed 2,000 bucks with funds come from FY88 Town Council Contingency. Second. Just so long as I get my silver bowl. Coming out of the Town Council Contingency. Is it knock down this ledge or have your bowl? Because I'm still going to vote in favor of the ledge. <laughs> <laughs> no, just, just kidding. Okay, any further discussion? I would just, Madam Chairman, if yes. I might, just like to say that this shows that one citizen can, in fact, influence Town Hall. Ed, thank you for your persistence on this. And I was going to say, Ed, that it shows that government can be responsive. And whatever ledges remaining we're going to do. You should sleep well, Mr. Capano. Wait. I guess whatever whatever ledges remaining we're going to do in your facial image, like a little Mount Rushmore there, Ed, just just as a tribute to your whole project. Okay, all right. I've got a second over here on that. I would just like to say, Ed, that uh, you have better influence than I do because I think I mentioned this a long while ago. Okay, are we ready for the vote? All those in favor? Unanimous. Sleep well tonight. Okay, item number 118, to consider authorizing end of fiscal year budget transfers and take any necessary action. Michael? This is a, an item that you're customarily asked to do in June of each year. What it is is uh, during the course of the year, there are several accounts uh, that end up spending a little bit more than had been planned when the budget was first prepared the previous February. In addition, we do not budget for all of the revenues that come in not knowing if they will come in. Uh, when those revenues come in, a lot of those tra directly transfer into expenditures, uh, particularly at the, at the planning uh, board level. So there are uh, four, five, six, seven, eight accounts uh, that are listed that I would appreciate your uh, approving revised appropriations for and be happy to answer any questions that you may have. Council Lottori. Madam Chairman, I move that it be ordered pursuant to Article 5, Section 8 of the Town Charter, the Town Council approve the items that are listed in our agenda for 19, fiscal 1988 revised appropriations. Second. Any questions of the manager? <coughs> Ready for the vote? All those in favor? Opposed? Unanimous. You voting yes, Lester? Uh, a little slow. Okay. <laughs> Got to really be quick tonight. <laughs> Item number 119. To consider authorizing certain accounts to have continuing balances at the close of the fiscal year and take any necessary action. Michael? Uh, as in the previous item, uh, in June, you're also asked to approve carry forward balances. Uh, the, there tend to be some funds that uh, are in certain trust, uh, certain obligations, uh, for example, gifts that have that been given for a certain purpose. Uh, you do have a list here. You can, might know that the land acquisition fund uh, is climbing nicely. Uh, excuse me. Beyond that, I would like to mention that the, the last account, the Pond Cove Playground account, uh, 4000 was raised. We might not need that whole 4000 but uh, what I'd like to do is uh, uh, possibly, if there's any money left in that account, to uh, assist in sprucing up the front of the middle school in conjunction uh, with the playground uh, work that's going to be going on down in just down below there where the old uh, telephone utility pole stumps are. 
the, the town money would only be spent on the portion up in front of the middle school, possibly some plantings and some, uh, some uh, real cleanup work to restore that to uh, the aesthetic beauty that it can have when it's properly cared for. We ready for a motion? I'd like to ask the manager one question for me. I know it's small and doesn't mean too much, but why, why would the street opening account have a carry forward type setup? Number, the first reason is because it hasn't been spent and the money comes in. The second reason is, is under state law, we're, we're required to take the street opening revenues and spend them directly on the streets. Uh, that's why it has to be a, a separate account. It has to be directly back attributable to the holes that were dug for street openings. I have a couple of questions, Mike. Um, the Harbor Study Visual Access, I, I take it, it, it is still intact. Yes, it is, progressing nicely. And when does it finish its mission? The Harbor Advisory Committee will probably be done within the next month to two months. Uh, the visual access uh, will continue uh, into the summer. That's the same group? No, that's a separate working group. Councilman William Jordan served in that group. Okay. The other question I had was the Catherine Davis Fund. What is being done? That's a, a very nice project uh, in memory of Catherine Davis, who was a member of the Fort Williams Advisory Commission. It's a point of land out in front of the picnic shelter. Uh, in fact, today, uh, four pin oak trees arrived down at Fort Williams for uh, planting. In addition, uh, there's going to be a, a circular stone, uh, what do you call them, a rose wheel? Is that the right term? Uh, as well as a couple of benches uh, that's going to be there. A nice area for folks to sit park. down and admire the view. Mm -hmm. It will be a beautiful park. It's, uh, we were held up on the work uh, waiting after Family Fun Day because that's a <gasps> popular spot for fireworks. Uh, we don't want people to trample uh, the new grass that we'll be planting it. Good. Okay. Uh, we don't have a motion, I don't think. Penny. I move that we authorize the certain accounts that were listed in our packets. I will read them if the council would ask. Uh, continue to have, move that they have continuing balances at the close of the fiscal year 19. This is the close, right? By like July 1st? Do you mean to be continued to in, five into 89. That's the one. That's the one. I thought you did. Second the motion. Even though it's confusing. That should be continued into 89. Right. Yeah. Pursuant to Article 5, Section 9. Right. Are you ready for the vote? All those in favor? Opposed? Unanimous again. Getting down the board. Okay, item number 120. To consider an update from the town manager on the Sawyer Road Fickett Street reconstruction project and take any necessary action. Um, yes, Michael. Yes, Thank you. Uh, very pleased to report the Sawyer Road project is coming along uh, exceedingly well. The construction documents are now out to bid. We expect bids back on June 27th. Uh, on Friday, we received the appraisals uh, for the various properties. Uh, in looking at the appraisals, uh, one of the council members brought to my attention over the weekend that one of the comparable properties uh, seemed to be a little bit off in terms of the acreage. Uh, it was 337 acres instead of 33.7 acres. There was a, uh, it, was, it was wrong by a division of uh, 10. Uh, because of that, uh, Bridget Sullivan, our intern today, uh, redid those comparables uh, using the 90 cents per square, per square foot figure that that would have come out at instead of the, the nine cents. And to take that for each of the properties affected uh, with the mean of all the comparable values, which was the methodology that the appraiser used, 
Uh, as you can see, uh, there is an impact in doing that of approximately $13,561.40, making a total package of, of about $50,000 in uh, land acquisition costs. Uh, I, I would like to say that I think this is, you know, within uh, what we discussed a year or so ago. I'd also uh, like to say is that personally I feel far more comfortable and feel it's that these amounts that are now proposed are much fairer uh, to the property owners involved. Uh, the amounts that we were taking from some of the, the more rural landowners over there were considerable and the uh, the amounts that was going that was originally going to be provided uh, based on the the wrong comparable property, uh, I think was really inadequate, and perhaps would have resulted in extreme difficulty in obtaining the properties, and in the end, uh, running into considerable more expense for surveying, determining the meets and bounds, and perhaps delaying the project. Uh, so, what I would like uh, would appreciate uh, if the council would authorize me to obtain the necessary rights of way. Uh, as provided on the plan uh, for a cost uh, not to exceed uh, $50,000. Well, just where did you get the 50? The 36 oh. that was original okay. plus the, the sheet I just handed out, the uh, additional 13561 13, Okay. In your term, damage easement means what? I mean, it's that column's listed as right damage, of way? damage easement, or is that a misprint? That is a drainage easements. Drainage we're, we're requiring okay. drainage easements, and it's a damage. Yeah, the appraiser used all languages if they were takings. And we, the actual appraisals are, are in books. It's this thick, 300 sheets. And what we're going to be doing is providing copies by the end of the week of everyone's individual appraisal. So they will see exactly the methodology that was used for them and no, uh, you know, like any other town project, uh, we're approaching this one with the thought that everyone is better off by everyone knowing uh, exactly uh, what is going on uh, with the project so they can make comparisons. I'm very similar to the revaluation project we did. I think uh, the town and everyone was a lot better off by, the, by everyone being able to make comparisons. Do I have a motion or hear one? Not for me. I'm the minority on this. Come on, Patty. I can't make this one. Come on. Uh, Councilor Latour. I was just curious as to the highest estimate of acquisition is five thousand three hundred and thirty-eight dollars. What does that represent? About how much land is is that? I didn't bring my calculator, so That's, I can't figure it. In that instance, that is that divided by thirty. Uh, that is. I mean, quarter, divided by thirty-five square or? feet. Do you have any idea in terms of acreage? Well, they're, they're long strips. So. Yeah. Do you remember? About his or the longest one? 15,000. But what I'm getting at is roughly what does this come out to per acre? It was equated out to a per acre price. Have you, have you ever figured that? Uh, if you take that per square foot amount and you multiply by 42,000, 43,000. Thank you. <laughs> Don't change. Do it in head. Is it, what's it, what is it, about 20,000? 16. 16? Mm. Yeah. Okay. For, for example. It's a little tough to deal with. I'm not used to buying land by square foot or seeing land sold by square footage. Yeah. But when, when you're doing strip acquisition, it's the only way you can do it. Yeah, I'm sure. Councilor Jordan. I'll make a motion to be in order to authorize the town manager to require rights of ways required for the Sawyer Road Pickett Street reconstruction project, the cost in conformance with the appraisal completed by an independent certified appraisal. Second. Not to exceed. Say that again? Not to exceed. 50,000. Okay. Not to exceed 50,000. And there was a second. Did you hear the not to exceed 50000 Michael? Yes, I did. Okay. Considering, Any it, further? considering it comes to 53000 that was yes. good to slip that in there. Who seconded that motion? Frank. Frank himself. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Opposed? It's unanimous. Penny. 
Congratulations. I, it is, I have to pickers. support the majority opinion. It is certainly not mine. <laughs> Did you vote for it or against it? Well, it's the council's wish to support this. I'm not going to vote against that. Besides, you wouldn't be asked to come back. Item 121. We're going to miss that statesmanship, I can tell you. Item 121. To consider approving the installation of an 8 inch water main in an old Ocean House Road in Old Ocean House Road and take any necessary action. Michael? Yeah, b before you take, I didn't realize you were going to table the Spinnaker Heights uh, proposal. Uh, prior to that, in putting together the agenda, I thought it was appropriate that as the final item you, were, you uh, consider one of these water district uh, main requests uh, so that we could tell Lester Jordan to that our, our knowledge it has not yet been installed uh, since he, he always questioned that. This is a very minor little main. It is uh, off the pavement uh, down by Peebles Cove Road. And it is just to, to get from across the right of way that's there about 13 feet. We could table this until we take item 113. <laughs> I have a yeah. question. Yes, ma'am. Right, well, a comment. On the application itself, they neglect to, we are talking about old Ocean House Road, right? Yes, apparently the Water District doesn't call it that in their, their records. Well, I think we should straighten them out after we went to such trouble to rename that. That would bring it to the other Do we have a motion? So moved. Second? Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Opposed? Unanimous. Now, it would be small well, this would be since discussion. Take item one thirteen off the board. Is there a motion to take item number one thirteen out of order off the table? Off the table. Off the table. So Second. All those in favor? Opposed? Unanimous. Michael? When we last left this item, uh, you requested the town clerk to obtain a copy of the conservation uh, minute. She has done so. You also requested me to call the uh, chairman of the planning board and the conservation commission. I tried and uh, on several different times, and the number was busy. Uh, but you do have the minutes before you. Madam chairman. Yes, sir. It would certainly appear from what I've read of the minutes of the uh, April 7th Conservation Commission meeting that not only were the uh, proposed uh, easements well explained and, and discussed, but the commission indicated its approval and appreciation of the developer's conservation plans. Further stated, the chairman will contact the Maine Coast Heritage Trust. I mean, it's very explicit in the minutes. And I'm sure that it would be very hard to misinterpret, from my perspective, the, the way that this development is going. And that being the <coughs> real concern of the council, I would move and have it ordered to approve the dedication of a conservation easement at the proposed Finica Heights subdivision to the Cape Elizabeth Land Trust and to conditionally accept a pedestrian easement to the town. Said easements are shown on the Spinnaker Heights plan dated March 30, 1988. And said dedication and acceptance is subject to the subdivision receiving approval from the Cape Elizabeth Planning Board. Second. Any discussion? Council of the tour. Mr. I was wondering if I could ask the town manager if there has been a conservation commission meeting since April 7th. I don't know. Because if there were, and the minutes of that meeting were approved, in my mind there'd be absolutely no shadow of a doubt, because they've certainly had time to review these minutes. That's, that's what I'm getting at in terms of our legality or the interpretation of missed signals, whatever you would like to say. These minutes were written up over a, at least a month ago, maybe six weeks ago. Yeah, the, so. the chairman writes the minutes. And the chairman writes the minutes? Yeah, I believe. 
obviously at the end. So then, if there has been a meeting since, and as it states at, at the top of the, these minutes that the minutes for the March meeting were approved, then there certainly couldn't be much question that the fact they had time to review it, and still it says the commission indicated its approval. So I don't. Mr. Cummings. We did go to the planning board uh, last month, and Mr. Rand was present then when it was, uh, the deeds weren't shown, but it was explained to the planning board of what our intentions were of easements and to the land, to the land trust, uh, et cetera, and there was no comments mentioned then. Uh, basically described the same thing that... Uh, did Dr. Rand do the yeah. presentation? No, no. John Mitchell presented it for us. He's, uh, he's representing us. And Mr. Rand was present, and they did ask me to get up and speak in reference to wetlands or something like that, but uh, uh, nothing was questioned on the... What did he say? Nothing was questioned on, you know, what was being explained as we were dedicating towards the town or to the easement for the uh, conservation committee. So, I mean... Dr. Rand did say something? He didn't. He, he did not. Okay. So, Councilor Jordan. In a packet, uh, conservation easement and indenture, that, uh, is that the main heritage trust that, that wrote that? Somebody could run the game real quick. Who wrote so this? Is I, I don't know the, the origin of the language. It's uh, speaking with Tom Leahy, the town attorney, on this. Uh, you know, there, there's certain standard language that is, and I think this will also answer Councilman. Uh, Bill Jordan's question. There's certain standard language that's customarily used in uh, conservation easements. Uh, a lot of that original language does come uh, in Maine. It's shared uh, by the, from the Maine Coast uh, Heritage Trust. I'm not sure uh, this particular language originates from them. Councilor Jensen. You know, this motion has been made subject to the planning board approving of the subdivision. I would certainly think if these conservation easements and pedestrian easements were not in order, that the planning board wouldn't give their final approval no matter what we did. They would ask it, we revise. I mean, I would just assume that that would be the process. So we're merely giving them a conditional okay, from my perspective. We're being asked to do what we were, we're doing what we're asked to do. And it's still up to the planning board. And that's the process it ought to go through. But once, but once we give the okay to this, I don't think the planning board can change and say we, you know, we want to change this and have different easements or more land given, or could they? Sure. They, they could. Have the they final, could. They have in the final public hearing. That's oh, okay. Final. I think. Yeah. Yeah. In, in this situation, this is what the property owner has offered. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, the, that's what you always do with any of these. You decide whether or not you accept the offer. Uh, if the planning board doesn't want to buy into it, they have every right to. Uh, not include this as part of the final subdivision plan and uh, therefore negate it. Councilor Jordan. I have no problems with this and I think the, as I read the minutes of the Conservation Commission, I feel that they have indicated and they agreed to what they have discussed with the landowner what have you in the past. So I would think we ought to move forward with it so he, they can move forward. I'm not going to belabor it by the issue that I brought up as far as an easement is concerned. I'll take that at a later date because I don't think it's the type of timber that I was thinking of. It's too much of that on that anyway, and I think it's something that I'd like to pursue with a conservation easement at a later date. <coughs> you move the question? All those who would like to move the question? Okay, the question is moved. All those in favor of the motion? It's unanimous. Thank you. Uh, I believe we have just about come to the end of our agenda, except for an opportunity for citizens again to discuss items not on the agenda. Now is your opportunity. Yes. You have to go to the mic. The mic. We know you want to get on the camera. <laughs>
I didn't want to until I went, uh, drove by the fort the other day. Uh, I'm Ed McCapel, 528 Sperling Capital. Um, Lived in town long? <laughs> 31 days. <laughs> uh, uh, I drove by the fort, uh, I guess it was Sunday, and I happened to take a glance into where the pool is. And then I did a double take because the pool on the right, left side is heavily infested with cat and nine tails. I do hope we're going to keep the pool. And I think this, uh, the sooner we get at those cat and nine tails, uh, the better it's going to be because they do encroach rapidly into an open area. I know quite well because the pond by the house gets heavily infested with them. And they are sometimes very difficult to move. But I think if we could get a backhoe down there or something like that, we could pull those out with a, or they could be pulled out with any. Wetlands uh, permit. With what? With a wetlands permit. Gee, do we have to have it for that? <laughs> but, but I wondered if it was possible to get that done. Michael? Yeah, we'll take a look at it. The Fort Williams Advisory Commission has a five-year plan, and I think it's still three or four years out. Mm -hmm. they, they do plan to rebuild the walls of the pond mm -hmm. in order to, to restore it to the, the nice pond that it once was. And may I just beg your indulgence for a moment more? Uh, for years, I've come to the council meetings, and I have watched Penny and Doug and Lester, and I would like to express my appreciation for your splendid effort during that time for the town of Cape Elizabeth. And I hope that in a future date, you might reconsider your retirement and run again. It would be nice to see you again. I commend you for taking a wise, uh, deciding on a wise decision. You're uh, doing one of the things I have always maintained that X number of years, fine. Then get off, sit back, and look at what you've done and accomplished, and let time go by for a while, but do come back. Thank, Thank you. you very much, Ed. When my hair turned blue, I said, what? <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, are there any other citizen well, yes. comments, right. suggestions? Then we will go to any council matters that are not on the agenda. I was, I was just on the follow-up on Fort Williams just for a minute. I did receive a call, someone complaining about the fact that they got locked into Fort Williams about three weeks ago. In other words, the curfew had passed, I guess, and the gate was closed, and they were elderly, and they were very upset. And as a matter of fact, one of the, the gentlemen was, was almost panicking because he needed to get to his medicine, et cetera, and it took the police quite a long time to come and reopen the gate. And I you know, received a very strong phone call about this. And I was wondering, what, what is the policy or procedure to clear Fort Williams before the gates lock? It's posted as one enters uh, what the time of closing is. Uh, at, the, at this time of year, we have a ranger on duty. Uh, they go from parking lot to parking lot, walking throughout the fort, uh, encouraging everyone to leave. There are occasionally times when people leave cars there overnight you know, they've gone off with someone. It's uh, never anything that, that can be, uh, you know, totally guaranteed that everyone is, is out of there. We've had some significant problems with that in years past. Uh, that's the first instance of, I've heard of it. Uh, this mm -hmm. summer. But there now, is a gate near Delano Park. There's a pedestrian gate that they can Yeah. I don't think, maybe these people didn't know there was a pedestrian gate there. But this might have been before the ranger. Before the ranger, does the policeman check the different parking lots before to see if anybody's left and then try to find them or? Yes. As best they can, in other words. Yes. But then they, there must be some double check where they'll come back at, within 10 minutes or 15 minutes to see if anyone's stranded. Is that part of the procedure? I don't believe that they do that, no. Someone then could get stranded in Fort Williams. I mean, uh, given this, and let's say, let's say there was just an elderly couple that really didn't notice the sign or didn't really notice, you know, notice some of the restrictions. I think you might just want to have maybe one of the police loop back. Well, you know, I have a they, they, they loop, I don't think they <laughs> deliberately try to loop back 10 minutes later for that purpose. But, you know, I think as, as we all know from being out in Cape Elizabeth, uh, 
doesn't seem like you have to drive five five minutes and a cruiser passes you. I, I did want to bring this to your attention. How did that person get out, though? They finally yelled and someone stopped the car and then went to the police station and told the police that they were trapped in there. But at this point, they had already just about gone into a panic. And they were, you know, they were just elderly people that... They, they were in a car? Mm-hmm. And they were, they were yelling to people going by on, and then finally someone stopped and they went up to the police station and supposedly the response they got at the police station wasn't very positive either. And they said, you know, when we get around to it, yeah, we'll go down and unlock it. So they were very displeased at number one being locked in and number two, the response that the police had to it. So I just wanted to make you very aware that that, it, certainly it's a very long shot. It doesn't happen every day, but I don't think anyone should ever get trapped in there for too long. One thing, if, if you do get complaints like that, it'd be, it'd be nice to get them like the next day so that we could go back and find out who was the dispatcher on duty and, mm -hmm. you know, if, if, you know, citizens are displeased with any service of the town. Uh, in any respect, it's nice to be able to look into it. And it, it gets a little more difficult as time goes on, but uh, I will relay the concern uh, to the Chief of Police. Thank you. Okay. I, I just have one more personal note that I would like to also say my personal goodbyes and professional goodbyes to the three councilors that are leaving. When you work with someone three and a half years, you get to know them and you have a lot of fond memories, as Councilor Masterton said. And, and I can think of a trip taken to San Antonio with Councilor Tinsman and a boat trip taken with Councilor Jordan and our families one beautiful afternoon. And Councilor, Tin Councilor Carson, who is my mentor here to my right and often kicks me under the table when I ramble on too long. But I just want to say, Penny, seriously, that your, your wit and your insight have, have just made this a pleasure for me to be on the council. And, I'm thinking of that old country western song I'll be singing, singing in a couple of weeks. I'm so miserable without you, it's like having you around. <laughs> so, so, but, but seriously, I, I'll miss you all. We, we all wish you the best. We all be, wish you the best in your future endeavors. So. Thank you very much, Frank. I'm sure I'm thanking you for all three of us. <laughs> Well, if there is no further business to come before the council, uh, I would just I'll like yes. I would just like to tell them that they're welcome to the name tags because I don't think we can use them. Good point. <laughs> yeah, good. I never got a name tag. <coughs> yeah, no, oh, those. Oh, I thought you were Penny. Well, I, I think that uh, I should say some closing remarks to the to the public. Um, to thank them for the opportunity to have served for nine years in the town council. Of all the boards and volunteer work I do, this has been one of the singly most enjoyable ones. Uh, it, it is different to see the changes that come over a community in my lifetime, having been born here, and indeed there are a lot of changes here. There have been some good votes and some easy votes and some hard votes, and I'm, I'm sure people have read the newspaper and read the courier to see some of the feelings we have about some of the votes. Probably the most difficult one was the sewer vote. We took a lot of praise and a lot of grief from a lot of citizens. I think I've always been surprised that there's has been so few people over the years that have come to public council meetings. Probably one of the best things that's happened, and I don't know if any of us have commented on it before, is the cable television. The fact that the that the choice is now for the citizens, I don't imagine there's too many to watch it from beginning to end, but I'm sure there's enough of people that flip by it. Over the years that we've had cable, which is I guess about two now, or I don't know whether it's two or one, but at any rate, lots and lots of people have commented on that they watch it. Um, but I would like to thank the public for the opportunity to serve. I think the new council coming on will be a good council. I hope they have the same wit and humor because you have to be a little lovely to do this job. I know that I leave the Goddard Mansion in very good hands since two of the new councilors at least made it a, a uh, in their brochures to comment on the Goddard Mansion. However, I shall be a council watcher. I may hire Ed Capano to watch sometimes for me, but I will certainly be watching because I need to watch the Goddard Mansion to make sure everything is done appropriately. And there'll be no more taking of stones from the mansion. <laughs> but anyway, I'd like to thank the public again. Thank my fellow councilors, it's been enjoyable. I, as I said before the other night, I think Doug and Lester and I are going down to have coffee and watch the next meeting, make comments, see what happens. <laughs> We're close enough to jump in our car and run back if something goes wrong. <laughs> in your opinion. Right, only in my opinion, absolutely. Thank you, Penny. We're going to miss your orations. I think you have someone to take the place. <laughs>
Well, if there's no further business, I'll take a motion. Second. Second. All those in favor?